at a drive shaft here, and the drive shaft links the transmission. And if you're looking up at this, this is the transfer case of the transmission all the way here. And then this rotating assembly right here is the drive shaft. The drive shaft links the transfer case or the transmission to the axle. Now, the drive shaft has two U joints. Here we see the rear U joint. And up here we see the front U joint. Uh, this customer is complaining about a vibration, and so we're going to check the U joints on this drive shaft. Okay, we're going to check the front U joint first, and the way that we can do that in the truck is hold the yoke and grab the shaft. Uh, the vehicle's in neutral, so I can spin the drive shaft. And now I just want to try and wiggle these independently. And I see no movement at all. This is a good tight joint. All right, can end that. We're, we're back at the rear joint, and we're going to do the same thing we did up front. I'm going to grab the shaft and try and spin the yoke. And this one, we can see we have all kinds of movement in the rear drive shaft. All right, that's because the universal joint has failed up top here. Uh, and as that one has failed, this bottom one's also on its way out. All right, we found a bad U-joint, so we're gonna remove the drive shaft. Uh, important thing to remember when you're removing drive shafts are drive shafts are balanced. This is a weight here on the drive shaft to balance the drive shaft, just like we'd balance a tire. So when we disassemble the drive shaft to put the new U-joint in, we wanna assemble the drive shaft so that it's oriented to the yoke the same way. So what I'm gonna do is stamp our drive shaft with a number two. So now when I reassemble the drive shaft, I've got a two lines up with this two, which lines up with that two. We can put this all back together the same way that it came out. Okay, we're ready to remove the bolts that hold the drive shaft to the rear yoke. So to do the job, what I've selected is an impact universal and a half inch impact gun. are pretty tight you'll notice the blue lock tight on the bolt holding them in that's good all right we've, we've got the four bolts holding the drive shaft to the rear yoke removed and now we're going to take the drive shaft off of the rear yoke uh, nothing else holds this on but rust right now so if you're not able to pull the drive shaft off you need to get a, a hammer or a pry bar and tap the drive shaft separate that joint. Okay, we've, we've gotten the drive shaft out so we can take a closer look at it on the bench. Um, and this is the front of the drive shaft and this part right here is called the slip yoke. And this actually uh, slides into the transfer case. If we look inside of the slip yoke, you'll see splines. The splines match with splines on the output shaft of the transfer case or transmission and the slip yoke can actually slide in and out of the transfer case. There has to be some slip component in a drive shaft to accommodate for changes in length. The drive shaft needs to change length as the wheels travel up and down or as the rear axle gets closer and further away from the transfer case. So as we go back we see balancing weights on the drive shaft and drive shafts are balanced just like tires and wheels are balanced. They're matched, not on the same machine, but they spin dry shafts to find imbalances and then hang weights on them. When we look at the rear universal joint, we have the drive shaft here, and we have the yoke, 
when we look closely at the rear dry shaft and the yoke, we can see that play that we talked about earlier. So we're going to remove the rear dry shaft and the first thing we have to do is remove the locks. Sometimes there's an external lock ring that would go in here and we don't see anything. Other times you'll find a lock ring on the inside in here and no lock ring on the inside. These actually have uh, fiberglass and epoxy injected into the drive shaft and it fills a ring inside the U-joint cap to lock it in place. So the way that we remove these is by heating them up. Okay, so we're going to remove this lock and to do that we're going we're to heat the drive shaft up until we see this glue start to ooze out of the hole. It's, it's oozing out right here. So we completed burning our injected plastic out of the yolks to release the universal joints. We're going to use the press for the rear universal joint and you can see what we have is a, a socket and it's pressing down on the upper cap and then we have another socket that's wider than the cap supporting it. Okay, and it's mounted up in the press. In other words, if, if you looked at our universal joint, we've selected a socket that we can fit one cap into to allow the universal joint to slide down through the drive shaft. And we've selected another socket that's roughly the size of the cap to push the cap down with. So we're gonna go ahead and, and push the universal joint through our drive shaft. Take a look at our, our press pressure, and we're down in the one ton mark. Uh, we need to be careful using a press because if we end up using really high press pressures, we can actually bend these ears together, and then the U-joint won't fit in there right. That's a, a straight line, and if the holes aren't lined up perfectly, you're not going to fit a U-joint in there. So I'm going to press down until I see the cross of the U-joint. Touching the bottom. And, and we got just a little more room we can, we can work with. So now the, the cross is bottomed out on the bottom of the dry shaft. I'm going to take it out of the press and remove that cap. All right, we, we pushed this cap out of the dry shaft, and now what we need to do is remove this cap and then push the, the universal joint back out of the dry shaft the other way. 
So once this cap is, is protruding out of the top of the drive shaft, I'm going to take a pair of channel locks. I'm going to grab the cap and just try and twist it first. Once I've broken it loose like this, now as I twist, I'm going to pull up. Uh, and it exposes the cap. And if we take a look in that cap, there are no needle bearings left in that or just ground up pieces of needle. It doesn't look like there's anything left. And that was the cause of this vibration in the rear. Okay, uh, so we pulled the cap off. We've turned the drive shaft around and, and we're gonna push the universal joint the other direction. You can see that we have a socket and it's pressing down on the U-joint here. And we have our same support socket underneath and it's supporting the bottom of the drive shaft. So we're just gonna bring the press down now and we should see this universal joint move through and push out the bottom. That's it. Okay. We, we've uh, pressed this cap out as far as we can, so we're going to take a set of channel locks and rotate the cap. So that one still has some needles in it, but um, the bottom one was definitely bad. And you can't replace a cap, you replace all four caps together with a new universal joint. So um, now that we have the, the caps off, what we're able to do is slide this part of the U-joint up and bring the cross out of the drive shift because there's no caps on it and we can remove our yoke and now we're going to do the same thing with these two caps that we just did with the drive shift okay so we have our our yoke sitting in the press we've supported the bottom of the yoke with a socket that is larger than the u-joint cap and we're pressing down on the upper cap with a socket that's smaller than the hole in the yoke. Um, and we're just going to bring this down until the cross, we can see really good, contacts the base of the yoke right here. And it's pushed the cap all the way through. Go ahead. We're going to go until we get this, this inner part of the joint all the way to the base of the yoke. Right there. Okay, so the universal joint's not going to go down any further because it's contacting the yoke right here. We're going to take it out of the press and remove this lower cap. So we've, we've pressed the cap through. Uh, we're going to take a set of vice grips and, and rotate the cap back and forth and then pull it out of the yoke. All right, we've got one remaining cap to take off. So we've got our yoke mounted up in the press. We're using a socket smaller than the circle in the yoke to drive the universal joint down. We have a socket here larger than the hole that the universal joint cap fits in to support the yoke here. So as we press down, the universal joint's going to travel down and it's going to push the cap down into the socket. 
Go ahead. Alright, so our universal joints all the way down, it, it's, it's touching the yoke, it's not going to go any further. We're going to take it out of the press and remove the last cap. That's good. Put the universal joint up and I'm comparing the height to my new one. And I can see right away that I have a difference in height. Our old joint is taller than our new joint. This isn't necessarily a problem because we're not going to use the injected plastic here to secure the caps we're going to use an external snapper. So that, that doesn't stop me from doing the job, this difference in height. But the next thing I need to do is look at the diameter of the caps. Um, so if we look at the diameter of the caps, we can see that this diameter is smaller than this diameter. I'm going to go ahead and measure them so we can, we can tell the parts company exactly what we have and what we need if they ask us a question. So I'm going to take my dial caliper, I'm going to close it, I'm going to loosen my edge here, and make sure that my needle is on zero, snug this back up, and I'll measure our original universal joint first. This universal joint cap is actually one inch, you see the one inch line, and we can count one tenth, point one, almost point two. So we have one point one. Now we look at what's on our dial, and we have 81, 82, 83, 84. So this is 1.184 in diameter. Now we'll measure our new cap, and this new cap is quite a bit larger, and we see that this one is one inch, all right, in the tenths place we have a three, so it's 1.3, and now on our dial we have a 70, 71, <laughs> 72, so this is one, Point three seven two. All right, Joe. All right. We called the parts store and we got a an updated joint uh, that matches our old joint, so we're ready to install our new joint. Uh, first thing we're going to have to do is remove the caps on opposite ends to install the joint in the yoke. So I'm going to pull this cap off and let you take a look at all the needle bearings inside the cap. We want to keep those needles inside the cap up against the wall. The only thing holding them up is grease right now, so we have to be gentle. If we drop this cap or vibrate it, the needles are liable to fall down in the bottom. So I removed caps on opposite ends of the universal joint. Now. I can fit the joint in the yoke and get it ready to install the cap. I want to have the U-joint as high as possible in the yoke so as I slide the cap on, the universal joint pins the needles up against the wall and they can't fall down. So I'm going to hold the universal joint up so it's holding the needles against the wall. drive my cap down. All right. Okay, we have the, the yoke supported in the press. We got a, a socket down here that's roughly the same size as the cap, slightly smaller. 
and then we're supporting the top of the yoke with this larger socket. So we're going to we're going to bring the press down. That's going to drive the lower cap up into the yoke. And what we're trying to do is raise the height of the cross so that when we install the upper cap, the cross is high enough to hold the needles in the cap up against the wall. This is the tricky part of the job. We've, we've got to set the second cap on here and avoid having any needles fall into the cap. So what we're going to do is lift the cross of this U-joint up just a little bit. And what that's doing is it's keeping the cap in the needle some and it's also getting this part of the U-joint up high enough that will hold these needles against the wall when I set this cap in. So I want to set this cap in, and now the cross should float freely between both caps. And I'm going to hold it off of the bottom a little bit. And tap the upper end. At this point, the cross should still float freely back and forth across here. If you did not keep the cross in the cap and you smack it with a hammer, one of the needles will fall out and when you go to press the caps all the way in, you'll find there's not enough room for your external or internal snap rings. Okay, we've, we've got our universal joint and our yoke mounted up in the press. You can see the universal joint spins freely. That's a good sign. All the needles are in the right spot. We supported the bottom with a larger socket. We have our, our socket that's slightly smaller than the diameter of the cap up top, and we're going to bring the cap all the way down. What we didn't show you in the last step was we already installed our external snap ring on the bottom of the yoke here. So as we press down, the universal joint's going to stop when it hits that snap ring. the universal joint mounted in our yoke and now we're going to install the universal joint to our drive shaft. So the procedure is the same as the install to the yoke. First thing I need to do is remove the caps off the universal joint and then slide the joint into the drive shaft. Now just like I did with the yoke I need to bring the universal joint all the way up so I can get the cap to sit on top of the joint. bottom cap so we're ready to install our last cap. Same rules as installing uh, the caps on the yoke. We need to lift the universal joint out of the bottom yoke just a little bit or out of the bottom cap a bit so that when we slide this last cap on the universal joint will hold the needle bearings up against the wall. So make sure to install the cap straight 
my cross should move freely between both caps. So we've, we've got both caps on. The next thing we have to do is install both external clips. We're gonna in install the universal joint. So <clears throat> what I've done is I've got the cross and the cross is sitting in the cap. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my vise and just drive the cap In with the vise. Once I've gone in, the next thing I'm going to do is drive the cap a little bit further than it's supposed to be. This is going to help me put the second cap in and not lose any needles in the process. So I'm going to go in. A little bit further than I have to. If I want to be sure that no needles have fallen down in there, all I have to do is look at the cap and the cross. If the cross sits down tight to the base of the cap, you're okay. If you look at the cross and you push down and there's space there, well, that space is because the needle's falling down in the cap. All right. You done? All right, this is the part where we can get into trouble, putting the second cap on. We want to get the cross inside of the cap so that it holds the needle bearings against the wall. That's why we pushed this cap a little bit further than we had to. Now what I'm going to do is lift the cross up out of the bottom cap just a little bit. That's going to allow me to slide the top cap on and hold the needles in the cross. So now if I want to know if I got things going right, I should be able to slide this back and forth just a little bit freely between the caps. If, if there's inter any interference, it may be because one of the caps has slipped and is binding on one of the needles. We got the universal join in, um, and the cross fits tight to both caps. The caps are in uneven right now, and what we're going to do is we're going to put the external snap ring in on this cap before we drive the universal joint down and install the snap ring on the top. <laughs> 